Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker and Kerr Lake. Over there is Applegate Cove Marina. Wonderful place to stop if you're on the river. And it took us some doing getting here, okay? We uh, had a few challenges. We broke the Hundestead twice. We broke the Hot Tamale. And we came in on a 15 horsepower Tecumseh. Paddles were not used, but then this happened. And also this. Enjoy the video. Yeah, that's looking better. That mud we're stirring up. That's idling. She wants to go so bad. My poor tire fender is taking all the abuse. There's a little smoke in the exhaust, so yeah, we need to unfish the blade a bit. So I'd rather be able to bring the engine up to a thousand RPM without lugging it. So I am going to unfish that blade a bit tomorrow because this is just idle. Yeah, she's lugging now. There's the black cloud of smoke, so yeah, too much. So right now I got the pitch all the way back, and that's as gentle as I can be on pushing water. And everything forward of this is just pushing more, so all it would do is lug the engine more. Hear it? Uh, it's working nicely, though. And the engine exhaust temperature is rising. Yeah, that's not bad, but I still need to be able to get more RPM when the blades are this flat. Uh, that's not really right. I need to be able to flatten the blades out more so I can get more RPM. Okay, enough for today. Neutral. So we'll repitch and check it out tomorrow. Okay, Mark and I here got in there and we unscrewed it. We flattened the pitch out a little bit more this morning. Three turns on the screw. We're running at 1,500 RPM. And we're not rolling any cold. And we're not pushing as much water as we were yesterday. Let me check the engine temperature. Okay, yeah, and the exhaust temperature is sitting at 500, which is fine. Woo! That fucking... Ooh. What'd we hear? Only four bolts. Four bolts, yeah, I know. Let's go look. Oh, shit. I can't believe that was a problem. We only put four bolts in the coupler. We heard something though. Oh look, I'm missing a bolt. It vibrated one of the bolts uh, we didn't tighten up out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't look oh. like it did any damage. Well, we won't do that again. We didn't tighten up the bolts on one side of the coupler just because thought, well, hey, we'll be back here doing it again. And don't. Everything needs to be tight before we test. So that missing bolt should be in here somewhere. I don't see it. Maybe it's underneath. That that was two thousand RPM that I tried to go to and it had trouble. So we're gonna take one more turn we think out of it so that we can make 2000 rpm at real low pitch that should give us a lot of power that was low pitch i was just trying to go to yeah I, I still have it set on zero so from that point we can make it pitch harder oh here's the nut yeah give me the papa <laughs> that'll make you jump sitting on the compressor okay we went ahead and took two turns out on the pitch that means it flattened it out some and so I've had to pitch with the controller. You can hear the engine change RPM that lugs it down. So that's working fine. And we're pushing some water. Should be able to throttle up to a thousand or more. Exhaust is good. Wash is good. And exhaust temperature is good. Bring it back out to zero pitch. Hear the engine RPM come up. Go back to idle. She's just pushing a little bit. I think that is perfect. So we're going to test her at this for a while and you can see how low that uh, exhaust gas temperature is. That means it's not burning fuel outside so we're not lugging the engine and we're not getting the black hole out the exhaust. This is her happy spot. We need a little more RPM. Yeah. Let her run right there for a while. Our starter was giving us little problems again today, so we've uh, taken the opportunity to put some new terminals on the cables. Maybe that's the problem. Could have been the problem all along, but we're getting another starter just in case. Well, it's not going, but listen. Ah, I tell it it's not going to start, and it starts. Six times before, it didn't do that. Hit it again. 
it was hitting it really hard. You could hear it go in. It sounded much better, but then guesses? I mean, we'll take this starter. We'll take the other starter. We'll take a brand new starter. I wonder if it needs to be shimmed slightly. Maybe the Bendix isn't Could be. all the way. Yeah, maybe the alignment. A slight alignment issue. Starters normally come with a couple of shims to okay. space right. out. This the, one didn't, but I've seen them before. One, they're about two inches What do you long. do? They get, this, they get the Bendix further away from the... Yeah, it's just because there may be a slight engagement issue. It's not engaging the Bendix all okay. the way. The Bendix doesn't go in all the way, then it doesn't engage fully on the uh, on the solenoid, which passes the current the through The current through motor. to it, yeah. So if anything, we need to shim it so it's back away. So the bend is to go further out. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna try and shim that starter out on this side to give the bendix a little more clearance on the gear because we think that may be jamming it. So just that bolt on the outside got a washer behind it, and that'll move the bendix out a little bit. Now it's been working every once in a while, so this didn't mean a lot unless it doesn't work. Clear? Clear. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Well, we're out on a speed run. We're slowing down now but we made we made 5.1 knots what do you think gwen's driving the boat here say hello gwen 19 millimeter all right give her to try to tighten up on that on that roller okay give it a hard turn for it all the way now all the way there you go keep going keep going i'm gonna give her a little forward and she'll start coming around there's the forward see her swing I'm gonna take her back in the neutral. Or we're just gonna let her coast. This is Josh's boat. That's Josh. Mark, being a mechanic, says, "Hey, it's not running smooth." So we're looking at why it's not running smooth. What do you think? That didn't make any difference, did it? I didn't hear any change at all. No. That'd be the one then, huh? Pulling one distributor wire off at a time and figure out which cylinder isn't banging. That's helping. We are saying goodbye to Muskogee, Oklahoma. Yeah, okay. This is Shannon at the helm. We've been, you've been talking about coming and doing something on the boat for a long time. I have. We've been wanting to do upholstery and all kinds of stuff. Upholstery? You missed the upholstery. Oh, I, we can find some more upholstery. Mark is with us this morning still, too. And Dave is back. And James is with us this morning. We're making documentary. And this is Amber. Say hello. She's cooking. I made spaghetti the other night, and I've had frozen pizza, and we even made a loaf of bread. I have some bread left over, right? You're making, what are you making, biscuits? Biscuits and gravy. What's the water for? For the gravy. Oh, okay. Uh, you can teach bacon. me to cook at some point. I can well, smell is, bacon. This is a quick one. A quick recipe? Yes. That's what I like cooking. I like sitting down at a I restaurant and having somebody bring me the food. No, 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 we don't need to do that. Nothing fancy. I, Charts are all working. Oh, he got it working. He reached down there and reconnected that wire. <laughs> if you want to leave Dave, you can consider this home if you like, all right? Anytime. Okay. All right? Because okay. this, this is fantastic. Oh, yeah. They found a broken wire on the alternator. You're not charging your battery. We're not charging. T-shirts are still for sale in the Sea Chest Foundation. SeaChestFoundation.org.
few years ago when it flooded, it was some excitement because some barges got loose and hit it. They didn't have to, but they hit it. Okay, we stay to the left. Stay to the left. Of that green sign. So the dam is down that side, and this side is just a lock, so the, there'll be no current in here. Anybody see a light? Jet skis got ahead of us. That's amazing. They're locking through three jet skis. They will lock through anything. You can come down here in a canoe and they lock you through. It doesn't cost you a dime. He's supposed to have a light. It flashes sometimes. Ah, uh, you see it's red. Yeah, there it is. It's got a little red light up there on the uh, upper right hand side of that building. Let's see here. Don't go in, it's not ready. So if you come up here without a radio, you just pull the guy's chain. Right there it is. He already knows we're here though, so don't pull his chain, okay? We don't want to piss the guy off. One step closer to the Gulf of Mexico. Neutral! Okay, we're all snug against the wall. I missed the first pin, but caught the second one. Well done. Doors are closed, level's going down. Okay, and put your life jackets on for the locks. These pins are floating in the wall. All we gotta do is keep a little bumper in there and we're good. Well, that's about 24 feet down and we're still dropping a bit. Yeah, we dropped about 27 feet there. Out onto a brand new world. Yeah, I had to, had to clear my ears. And on we go. Okay, well that's looking back up river at lock 16 and uh, we're sitting here on anchor. Because we lost the hundred again and the little electric backup pump, it's working. But it's not moving any oil. So it's on but it's not giving any pressure. Oh, no. All right, I'm gonna kill it then. Well that's okay so we can get our, our fake piece in there. Let me give you a screwdriver and you can take it off. Okay, our fix is in place. Clear? Clear. Put it forward. Yeah, we're moving. Okay, seems to be working. Another janky repair made. It's pushing water. The guys are pulling up the anchor. Dave is down below, hopefully not in the drivetrain. And uh, we should make the next 25 miles, half of our trip down to Kerr on our uh, emergency fix. We're getting very good at this. All right, I like seeing that, because that cell has, what, 67 feet on it, right? Okay, that's good. Cause that one up by the other bridge, it was 10 feet off. Green light? Yeah, shoot for that green light. Neutral! Stand by! I think we got it. I think we're fine. All right, crisis management update. Uh, Shannon has the wheel. Uh, Amber has pizza in the oven and corn dogs. We've disassembled the drive shaft down below. So that damn thing's gonna come back out. And Marcus uh, watching our fuel capacity to make sure we have enough to run in all the way into uh, Applegate Marina. We should be there late tonight, but there. It is amazing, this engine is pushing us. We're doing four knots. We got two gallons left. All right, we'll do the burn calculation and let me know if you think we're gonna make it. Okay, we have corn dogs, and look at this. Remember that scene from uh, the African Queen where they finally break out of the uh, swamps and into the lake? That's what this feels like. And the Hunter's Ted is back on the work table. 
So soon we shall know what happened this time. All right. This is the much better way to tow. Okay, we're towing still, but now we're doing it with the, the little dinghy. Oops, because the big one, the motor, is not liking life today. That means we lost the understead. We lost the main propulsion, even after we tried fixing the understead to a fixed pitch. We lost the hot tamale, Yamaha, and now we're running on the Tahatsu. We got 4.8 miles to go. And then I got two paddles. Okay? Oh, we called Josh. Yeah, we called Josh. But his boat's 50 miles away. We got RJ. He came out. Yeah. He can come back in the morning and pull us the rest of the way in, maybe. Yeah, we'll make it. <laughs> so we actually got a couple of navigation lights at work, and look at that beautiful sunset. Okay. Good morning, bright and sunny day, and uh, I parked a little too close. At night, that didn't look so close, but it's, it's rather close. But we got a nice, and I have no propulsion except the little dinghy, but I got a wind. And I got a big boat that can sail. I, I don't even need to put the sails up. So we're gonna raise the anchor and drift out a bit. All my crew got back to their cars last night at home. And that's fantastic, man. Yeah, there comes some mud. Having enough breeze, I don't think the anchor chain went anywhere. It just laid on top of the anchor last night. It's a better motor and it still doesn't have the loaf I need. Yeah, she's off the bottom enough. Yeah, definitely a mud bottom here. And of course, the wind dies. Fire the dinghy up and give her a little extra hand. Chinese to the rescue. Yeah, a trick Brandon taught me to grab the chain, use the smaller diameter of the winch here, instead of that there, which is the spool, to bring her up. Tension on that. Up she comes. Now the wind actually shifts against me. But if I can just get right out there, we'll be better. Okay, leave the tinder for a while. Yeah, we're moving all right. The weather's actually working. Doing this now because they have thunderstorms forecasted for tonight. Yeah, okay, it's, it's working, it's working. Actually turning very nicely. You and I, you get good at this. It's gonna take a while, but it's always fun to learn something. It's always a little scary. I like that. You know, we can shift forward. We can even put out further away. I wanna be at least 75 yards, 100 would be better. Let's switch from forward to reverse. It's not pretty, but it's working. Yeah, she's even responding to her rudder with the outboard on the side we're turning into. But we're moving in the right direction, and it's over 24 feet. And see, this is eight feet back in here. Now we can be in eight feet, but this feels better being further from that shore. Okay, kill the outboard, drop the anchor. Yes, yeah, much better. See that? That's called an anchor stopper. It's supposed to be up when you're letting the anchor out. Watch how it works. I'm not gonna get my rope back. Nope. What's a piece of rope? See? Anchor's not going out now. Oh, what mud, what mud. Come on, baby, you can do this. I mean, you can't really get... Really? Crowbar. There we go. Anchor lock's doing its job. Ah, oh, fuck. All right, hydraulic pressure. Again. Forgot to flip the anchor lock up, so it's doing its job. And I don't want it to do its job. Pull up some chain. There we go. Come on, baby, you can do a little more. There you go. Anchor lock's off. Break is on. Disengage the clutch. And now we let her go. I know what you're thinking. Have you seen the runaway anchor videos? Yes, I have. Brake works. It should be a little over 100 feet, which is not enough for storms, but it's enough for a lake. The lock back on place. Let it snug into that. 
There we go. Yeah. Now, clean up. You know, I think I'd be better at this if I didn't have to fool with the camera too, but bringing you all along is kind of fun. Thanks for coming for the ride. <laughs> and enough with buckets. I just remembered I got a pump. I don't even have my mass welded in yet, so I've had a sump pump down here in this forward compartment to pump rainwater out occasionally. So we plug that into the sun and dangle it over the side. Wow, this is nice. We got a wash down. And then get an Anchor Watch app or Anchor Pro or something like that. It'll let me know if I'm actually dragging the anchor because you don't want to come up from down below and find that you're not where you left yourself. Not away from shore, but not too far away from shore. That's the channel out there. No, I didn't crowd in. The buoy is way over there. That's one of those little seaplanes. I almost did that instead of building a boat. I like the boat. That's the first night and day living off the hook. I think I'm going to enjoy this. July 4th, Independence Day, and my first day on anchor. Let that sink in. What if you just don't make it? said this time and this time I think it was self-inflicted yeah we did this it blew an o-ring but I think that's just uh, collateral damage from uh, the bolt fragments that were in here probably cut it and that is a piece of the bolt this time though it did not shear the bolts it tore out the last thread the top thread or two are just ripped out and that was my fault. You know, I wanted to get out of there and small town hardware stores were sort of limited. So True Value had some bolts that were quarter 20, but eh, just not quite long enough. Didn't have the right kind of head on it. So I thought, ah, oh, it'll, it'll work. No, well, it didn't work. I haven't thought so badly of it. When I was back up in Tulsa after putting this thing together, I, I stopped by the rule company and bought some of the right bolts. It's, it's longer and it can actually seat in a little deeper. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna catch the right number of threads this time. So I'm gonna chase out those threads a bit to make sure the top ones are clean, back together with the proper bolts, and uh, yeah, new O-ring. On the upside, we are getting really good at taking this thing apart and putting it back together. Okay, if you want a little more behind the scenes at SV Seeker and my motivations, I guess, for building the boat and so forth, uh, I did a podcast with uh, Susan Ruth. It's called Hey Human. And I like the context of the channel too, because it's about everything that's going on that's good in the world. And uh, that's definitely something we need to focus on more than the garbage that's out there. And so check it out. It's Hey Human podcast. Uh, I think it's called Doug Jackson. I'll put a link to it uh, below. And you know, she has this other thing going on with a partner, Myra of hers. And Susan and Myra are doing a uh, YouTube channel, but they need a hundred subscribers. And so uh, I'll tell you, the, the, this channel is about, this is two women sitting down and talking about uh, dating, relationships, and sexuality. And I told her, I said, look, my audience is 98% male. I don't think we'll have any problem finding you 100 subscribers for your YouTube channel. And that's called, uh, Are We There Yet? I'll put a link to that too. So go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel because without that, they can't even name the thing properly and they're just trying to get it off the ground. So help them out there. Appreciate it. Well, that's it for us in this video. I thought that next video I'd be uh, putting sails together and doing a little sailing around this gorgeous lake here, but uh, no, nah, we're going to be putting the hundreds together because we really need propulsion. I mean, we can't move the boat around with a 15 horsepower engine all the time. So, hey, you guys, if you have something go wrong, hang in there. It'll get better. You'll get better at doing it too. So when you work on your projects, take a few pictures and send them to us. Inspire others. What'd you make today? Do. He might rock you